The following story was written and recorded by B, a participant in Mental Health Connecticut's Write On program. This class was done online during the 2020 coronavirus pandemic, precluding our usual in-person final reading event. B's piece discusses childhood sexual abuse and its impact on her life. The story is raw, personal, and contains language that may not be suitable for younger listeners. I once had a single story that I was a victim of childhood sexual abuse. And being a victim turned survivor, my thoughts often battled between the story of a poor me and the hero's journey that led to the woman I am today, or the woman I am trapped into portraying. Trapped, caged, no room for escape. I'm held captive by the mind, the body complies as my soul withers inside, dying to know what lies beyond these mental bars. Disability, a life sentence without parole. There's no getting off for good behavior, just less people willing to do you any favors. See, good behavior shows one's capabilities, despite any mental disability. And once you relapse, you're back in the trap, berating yourself for even trying. In these moments, there's no use in crying, for there's no one to dry the tears. It's just you trapped in your cage of sorrow, wishing for a better tomorrow. Most days, it doesn't feel like me, but like an, ent- but like an entity that's taken over. It was first there in protection of me, but now in possession of my soul's being. Together, we are metamorphosing into a new breed of human being. At least that's what it seems like to the inner me that's observing another me. The me that can see all the ways that I can get tripped up in anger. I'm exploiting at every small trigger. With, with each blast, the egoic entity gets bigger, sometimes laughing as the observant person within me lies helpless within the glass case behind my face. My expressions of empathy do not translate. It's too late. The trauma won today. If one was caged their entire lives only within the confines of their mind, would they ever know what it's like to be free? Would they ever understand the concept of freedom if they've always been held captive? These are the questions that plague my mind. I feel like I'm constantly at war with my thoughts, battling with who I want to be and who I've always been. You can't switch up now. You've got to stay constant, the voice in my head would say. If you change now, you'll be seen as a fake, the voice would continue to say, just to make sure that I remain the same. At times I feel like a hamster on a wheel, running as fast as I can but going nowhere. Still I continue my pace, still competing in this race. Only that that's only in my head. Thoughts racing as fast as the wheel is spinning. Is there any possibility of winning? One of my many fleeting thoughts as I continue to run fast, running away from the thoughts of the past. I'm determined not to come in last. Within my abilities and stamina, I will outlast. The negative memories that try to grasp onto my present self, they try to make me relive my past hell make me question and doubt myself. Trapped in this cage, I'm too embarrassed to ask for help. Who am I? How do I identify with the person I see in the mirror? Dirty or clean, it doesn't get clearer. Who am I? How should I identify? As a woman who's slightly bi, I'm attracted to females, but not as much as guys. Does that still make me queer on the spectrum line? grew up confused about my sexuality because of the explicit things that were shown and done to me. Who am I? How am I to identify? Am I a fake daddy's girl with too many skeletons to hide? Forever scarred by the lies that hid away the dirty secrets kept inside. Who am I? Am I even allowed to identify as a victim when I was given a choice of two prisons? Between physical abuse from my stepmother or sexual affection from my father, which is a child to choose when the long-term effects are unknown. Sexual abuse in the face of its physical counterpart is lesser of the two evils, especially if the oppressor was my biological parental figure, telling me every step of the way that what he was doing to me was okay. In fact, it was more than okay, a special secret game. only. One that only daddies and their daughters play, he'd say. A game that I wasn't allowed to play with anyone else until my wedding day. Who am I to tell anyone 
who's been in my shoes how to survive when I had just laid there scared, wishing I was never here, wondering what I did to deserve this treatment. Was it the way I moved my adolescent body during gymnastics, dance, and cheerleading? Could it have been the Afro-Caribbean dancing? Learning to wind my hips before knowing that it was seen as enticing. Was it because I looked like the spitting image of my mother, the woman whom he's never gotten over? Who am I to tell my family the truth? I've let it go on for so long. What's the use? I've had plenty of chances to make my advances, so what's my excuse? Besides the hush money dangling in my face that fed my greed, still relying on a parent for basic needs, an increasing amount of insecurities that would soon define my personality, I realize I must be my own savior. No handouts, no favors. I am determined to break free. I will continue to survive despite this hamster-like mind. I will break free of the rat race. I will decide my own fate because the voice inside has decided there is no other way.